morning to all the parents, panelists, speakers, and all the delegates for the function. So today we are in the inaugural talk of our National Parent Summit for Special Needs Parents. And uh, we have a very instrumental personality with us, sitting with us, which is uh, Seema Lal Madam. Uh, she is a founder at uh, Together We Can Foundation of Kochi. She is also working towards advocacy in mental health, disability, child rights education. She is a mental health consultant at International Council to enrich, empower, and enable. As a professional, she is a psychologist and special educator. She has also been a research scholar at a university in Amsterdam. Seema Lal Madam has been working in this field for more than 20 years. She has worked in non-governmental organizations as well as the private sector institutes in India as well as UAE. Welcome, Madam, for the talk. I would like to just tell you that this is the first talk and uh, nothing better than uh, addressing the audience with respect to the current scenario and current challenges, which is the COVID situation. So the topic or, uh, topic for Seema Madam is going to be COVID and children with disabilities. And uh, without wasting any further time, I would like to hand it over to Madam. All the best, Madam. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning to everyone and this is unbelievable what all of you have achieved here that 45 participants at nine in the morning and after one and a half years of a pandemic and so many webinars and we've got almost the whole of India together and so congratulations to the team first and totally honored to be the first speaker here after the inauguration and then I feel that's a huge responsibility and an honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And on that note, uh, to all the ones attending, and I see already uh, eminent uh, attendees here, or a lot of them with extensive experience already in the field. So that's even more honoring to be speaking to this uh, group of set of parents and professionals. So, yeah, so my topic here, um, COVID and children with disabilities. I'm sure we've heard this word COVID way too many times. So what I thought, I'll, we'll do it a little different. I'll share the screenshot and then take it forward. Um, I would just add in addition to the introduction that uh, Dr. Saumil gave, I think what I learned most is when I became a mother myself, I have two children. Uh, one is turning 15 and the other one is 11 and that has been the biggest experience and that is where most of it when everything fell in place all the education and work experience fell in place when you actually try it out on your own children so I would consider that as the biggest learning and what I would be sharing from so I'll share the screen here uh, I hope somebody can tell me that it is seen. Is, can everybody see it? Dr. Samuel, can you give me a heads Perfect, up? Perfect, ma'am. Perfect, yeah. ma'am. We can see um, the word pandemic. Over yes, screen. the pandemic. And I'm sure you can see, see it as a blank slide. Yes, with yes. Nothing, right. Yes, yes. Now you might wonder, what is this? There is the information, you know. So this is what the pandemic kind of threw us into. A kind of a blank space of where are we going? When is this ending? How long is this going to be? A kind of a blanked out and are we even, you know, it's a very confused state. So it actually our situation sometimes in our mind as well, we feel like blank. What is this whole thing? Whatever happened to all of our lives, isn't it? But one thing when we talk about pandemic and children with disabilities, what is interesting is earlier we had this very clear cut divide between disability and the so-called abled and you know there was a huge segregation and what caused the segregation was predominantly environmental and attitudinal barriers isn't it but come pandemic all the barriers has been leveled everybody is facing isolation everybody is cut off from each other everybody's learning is affected everybody's lives are affected so it's kind of leveled all of us to get a good understanding of what was this whole thing about ability disability that we were talking so we we just realized that we are all just together and when the environment chooses all of us can be just disabled in one click just one one, one and a half years and we are still there 
So that is the realization that we move forward. So this, why I wrote this word P-A-N-D-E-M-I-C is, I will run through it as a acronym, which is my uh, obsession also, so that I remember to cover every point. And it's going to be very, very simple. It's not going to be full of jargons and theories because I'm sure all of you have attended umpteen webinars over the one and a half years. So let's keep it simple. And I'm going to keep it really basic for any family and any child. Whatever needs to be very specific to, no family is the same, no children are the same. So what needs to be specific will have to be taken individually with whichever professionals you're already working with. So on that note, uh, I start with the first slide. I, it would be great if somebody can tell me that if this, the slide is changed for everybody. Yes, madam. Yes. Okay. So the first letter here, P, that we go on to is, no, but there is no perfect parent. We are not aiming for perfection during a pandemic. That is one basic thing I think we should get rid of in our heads. What is the perfect way to be or the perfect parent to be? The first thing is getting rid of the idea of perfection. There is no one way to work with any child. There is no one sure, short, quick fix solution to anything. And we already knew that. None of us became parents knowing exactly how to parent whatever child we got, isn't it? So first and just now, but you will have these in between plenty of perfect moments like I just had now, when I entered the session, I have my two children outside there. And suddenly one said, Mama, I will make breakfast. So I was like, ah, this is the perfect moment. No, it doesn't happen every day, but today it just happened. So I will hold on to that. So we get these little, little perfect moments. On the other day, there will be a huge hangama here on what breakfast should be. So it's not like just because I am a professional or just because, you know, we, uh, somebody comes with uh, a 20 years of experience and all these education that I have my life sorted and I have this perfect, not at all. There are many days which I goof up royally and we come back and bounce back. But what is important here is the next word with P that knowing that it is a partnership and it is a partnership with me as a mother, as a parent, with whichever professionals I'm working with, a partnership with my children, a partnership with my husband and partnership with all these other wonderful organizations. We are all together and it is up to us to know when I'm struggling with something, who do I partner with for this particular struggle of mine, which I'm going through. And when we know we are struggling, the next P is practicing the pause. When we feel overwhelmed as a mental health professional, I would strongly say this, practicing the pause. When in doubt, pause. When we are like angry with our children, or angry with ourselves, with our partners, pause. And then what do you do with the pause? Pause is please make yourself the priority. Remember when we are going in flights, we always hear this, uh, wear your oxygen mask first before you hand it over to your children or help with another person, right? The P is making yourself a priority where we know that self-care is not selfish. Unless we ourselves as parents are healthy and calm individuals, we will not be able to support our children for whatever their needs might be, whatever the ability or disability might be, it is going to be very, very individualized. But the first thing is knowing that when you're getting overwhelmed, easy, pause and prioritize because we are all work in progress. If you, to give an example, just today, this morning, I have been sitting and making changes to this PowerPoint and adding one more slip because I'm still trying to make it better and better because we are not going to reach this perfect PPT ever. So it's always work in progress. And we need to be exceptionally patient with the way how things are because it is not predictable. And whenever things are not predictable, the next, which is the A, we will all, there is an underlying anxiety in all of us and nobody is denying that. So let us remember all the Ps and then we accept that, yes, we are all anxious. So what do we do when we are anxious? That is the A of the pandemic. 
knowing that there are multiple alternatives it is like we said this is not this is not the perfect way for my child okay so there might be other ways so it really depends on what is it that each family is going through at the moment what are the skills what are the needs of your specific child do you have other children are you a single parent uh, do you have in-laws and your parents living so each family is so different isn't it and there will be different alternatives to reach and knowing that just because one alternative didn't work it is not the end at all you are not reached a stuck up phase and if at all you feel so what should we do we need to a for is ask for help you're already here now and you are connected with a lot of professionals across the country so in whichever place you are whoever is easily a for accessible to you reach out ask for help remember the p partner with those specific people find out different alternatives that works very specifically for your family never never feel that oh my god i have reached a dead end because the whole thing about a pandemic and even when we work with our children is how do we adapt you know intelligence our intelligence is going to be tested here uh, whoever is considered intelligence is the one who can adapt to the changes in the environment right and none of it is easy we all know that this is not easy but it is for us to be a for aware that you know we will have this aha moments a lot of parents with children with uh, multiple severe disabilities came back and said sima i never thought my child could do this aha so that means he can because we never probably explored so this can be an opportunity also to know oh wow my actually my child can do it and i realized that, that with my own children that when there is no house help here they could actually make their own breakfast they could clean the house they could clean the bathrooms which i never explored and because we always had help for all those things so i think that is one area which these are all the a's and the most important will be remembering that there are alternatives asking for specified help for your specific child let us not go very general here it has to be something specifically which works for your family and works for your child because what works for mine need not work for you so please ask to the right people or the right uh, professionals or whoever your partners are then the end i hope this has changed too for everybody and believing that it has changed i'm going to the end which is negotiation now negotiation is the terminology we usually hear when we are entering into a contract or we hear in a workplace so what is this negotiation that we need in families or within household why do we have to negotiate basically especially when we are in a pandemic situation we were not meant to live like this none of us none of us were human beings were not meant to live inside these four walls all the time and not step out and not interact with people that is not how we were wired or we were supposed to be so this is going to be a time when we should really negotiate starting with ourselves what is it that i can do and what is it that i cannot do so which means here you see a little here no no thanks no you know you know that i can do only so much in a particular day and that is all i am going to do like for example today i there may be lots of wonderful things that i want to do with my children maybe i want to do therapy i want to read them a story i want to play scrabble with them wonderful but maybe i can't do it everything on a single day and maybe not every day so i should know what is my energy level my work will demand that okay see now you have six sessions today and i should be okay to tell them also no i cannot take six sessions today because i have this going so i should know very clearly and negotiate with everybody it will include negotiation with children which means at least the previous day have some kind of an agreement on what is it some kind of a, like you say all these little words there communicate communicating with tag bringing everybody together and there is a goal tomorrow this is what i want to achieve and this is all that i want to achieve all the rest i'm going to say a no to and if at all you're confused when there are too many options 
please focus on the needs rather than the wants. You know, children will come up with, I want that, I want this, whether it is children with uh, difficulties or not. There might be a lot of things that we want to do. Prioritize what is the need now? What is the basic need in the house you now? What is it that first start with emotional? Is everybody calm? If everybody's calm, that would be like the foundation to build on. But if everybody is not calm, that need becomes the highest need to address that. And calmness and dealing with our anxieties, if we are keeping that as a priority need, one of the biggest routines that we will really need to which has been overlooked for long is our night routines, our sleep. Our sleep is very directly linked to our mental health, to our metabolism, to our physical health, everything. But most often, the night routines or the sleep time is where we kind of mess up, including ourselves. We tend to work late. We have all sitting in front of screens way more than what we did the previous years. So all this affects our quality of sleep, even if our children or we are getting, say, eight hours of sleep, the quality matters. Are we sleeping more in the night times or are we sleeping more during the day? All this makes a significant influence on our emotional health and mental health. So watch out for the entire family's night routine. That will be one need. If you take care of a lot of it will settle. So that will be the N. The next slide will be the D. We always talk about, like, you know, uh, even in the COVID situation, we have been getting a lot of guidelines of don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, don't um, come in groups. You know, a list of don'ts can create anxiety because we don't have an alternative. Then what do we do? So when we talk to our children or when we talk to ourselves or to anybody, remember, if we are talking about uh, don't do this, always, always remember, then what is the alternative? Then what do they do? So if you cannot combine with, if not this, then what? Then focus on that. Let us talk about what can be done rather than what should not be done. So instead of saying, uh, don't take off your mask or don't touch your face, you know, just rephrase it. Remember in our communication, if we can rephrase every, every negative sentences that we are saying to something that can be done, a lot of anxiety can be settled in. And these are the different Ds that every household can have. One is the dining. See if at least one meal, at least one meal, all of you can have together and keep it really slow, talking about the food without the screen times. It can be, depending on whatever routine is there in the family, it can be night, it may be breakfast, it may be lunch time, or it could be even snack time. But at least one meal, everybody together without the devices makes a huge connecting time for the family over meal that, okay, we are grateful that we at least have the food together and now all of us are together. The second D is the dialogue table, which means if anybody in the family is hurt, whether it's you or your child, address the emotion first. Talk about it, find out more. It has to come into a discussion. And this has to happen D for daily. Because earlier, even if we are not discussing, children had other things to do and we would all move on. But now we are all close to your head. Other than being there for each other, we don't have access to anybody else, no schools, nothing else. So it's important to bring these discussions and dialogues every day. The next thing is delight. Every day needn't be a serious thing, especially if the news is on all the time. It can be a panic situation. Oh my God, how many people died there? Oh my God, it's coming close. We are in a triple lockdown. There is thunder, there is cyclone. There can be enough of things for us to not celebrate life. But if we as adults make a conscious choice that we are going to bring a teeny weeny at least bit of delight into the daily routine, it could be anything. It could be we made a nice little drawing today or it could be today we're going to paint this part of the wall of the house or anything. If you know your children and your family better, bring in some little delight or some surprise element, however little it might be, makes a huge difference. And of course, the last D, definitely not the least, would be a divine table, irrespective of whether we are religious or not religious. 
regardless of which uh, faith we belong to, you know, knowing that there is a power beyond us, there is a power within us, and there is a power around us. And, you know, putting outside that energy and, you know, hoping that, okay, you know, a kind of a, uh, putting out positive energy outside a divine table that will be nice, whichever faith we belong to, coming together to be grateful, thankful, that can make a huge difference. That is the D. The, uh, just for the sake of breaking the uh, silence that I'm listening now, Dr. Soman, if, uh, if this uh, thing has changed, right? I hope I am still audible and everything is fine, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Just for just to break that silence, so that you know, sometimes after these webinars, you feel, am I really talking to myself, or is somebody there on the other side? You know. Okay. Now we go to the E, uh, and this I would say would be the most important takeaway. Even if you forget everything else, what I have said, this one slide probably can be retained because E for emotional health. Please, that can be top priority unless we are calm and emotions of emotional health of everybody in the family has to be prioritized now because anxiety is given when there is unpredictability and we are living in unpredictable times anxiety comes because there is fear of unknown and unpredictable and also fear of failure we don't know isn't it so anxiety is given so prioritize emotion and understand that there is no positive negative emotion like it's so no emotion is negative it's absolutely fine to be uh, afraid it's absolutely fine to be angry it's absolutely fine to feel guilt regret all these emotions are fine but we have to feel it and we have to accept that, okay, this is what I'm feeling. Sit with that feeling. Do not try to brush it aside because the more you try to push away your emotions and your thoughts, the more force it comes back. You know, it's like these um, uh, Pomeranian puppies or like those uh, monkeys that you see outside. You know, sometimes when we go to these um, temples there are these monkeys which will just come so the more you show them away the more they come so emotions can be like that feel it accept it it is okay and then how and then you can slowly come back because emotion is basically energy so if you do not put it outside how do we make put these energy outside is one being aware of how is this energy going inside that is here you can see tiny up there eating be watchful of the energy that you're giving your children and yourself. If there is too much of sugar and the energy inducing items and they do not have an option to spend these energy, then we are in trouble because all these energy will become emotional energy and we will not know what to do with it. So watch out. Like in my home, I mean, this will depend on each family, specifically depending on whatever diets you're following. But in my house, we used to have three meals and sometimes four. We have reduced it to two meals and we have really reworked on what goes into the diet plan. You know, a lot of sugar has been cut down because we don't need that many meals. We are all stuck at homes. So watch out for what we are eating. There is that also being effective and efficient. Being effective is, okay, I have done everything what was needed. But at the end of the day, if you're feeling exhausted and tired and, you know, low energy then you were not efficient maybe you didn't have to do so much maybe it was perfectly fine to slow down so you will know if we are being efficient and effective is when you're still happy and you still have energy for the next day then you're being efficient but if you've drained all your resources in one day but you have done a wonderful day but you're dead for the next day then maybe you have been effective but not efficient the next thing here in the E is also error correction. Remember in the previous one also, when we, when we see some mistakes, which of course we will see, whether it's in our partner or in our children or even with ourselves, always think about how, what is the alternative. So whenever we are saying, correcting something, always, always, always club it with what else would you have preferred, even for yourself. When you don't have this alternative is when you need to ask for help. But if you have the alternative, that is wonderful. And here in the center, we see the Aishinova's matrix, which is again a personal favorite of mine. 
it is perfectly the you see that quadrant over there the do the plan the delegate and the eliminate the do the e will be the first e over there can be that this is something which is important and this is urgent and i have to do it and only i can do it there will be a list of things like for example today this a presentation only i can do it i cannot delegate it to my husband or my children so this has to be priority for me nothing else so that has to come the next is planning which is important but may not be urgent so like today's breakfast it is not on me i told my children today it's on you and they said fine mama we're making it so that is taken care of then the next thing is you know we but i had to plan we had to really plan the previous day what are they going to make because the planning part i couldn't leave entirely there but i could move to the third quadrant which is i could delegate it but the planning had to be on me and the certain things which i'm not going to do i have already cancelled two three other sessions which was lined up today i said no i cannot take it because this is going to be priority so each of us have to decide that how much energy do i have today how do i feel and it's perfectly fine to delegate give it to somebody else if somebody else can do it let it be that will be the e uh m again uh important slide i would say uh in this pandemic the though my topic here is covid and children we've had enough of talking about covid i think we have to now become come back to the basics and keep it really really simple on what really matters what really matters is what is the meaning that we bring to our lives you know and if we don't see any meaning in what we are doing it could be therapy it could be your work or it could be anything at all because for me with my children i had to take both of them off the online school because the way it was going i did not see meaning so each of you have to decide are you seeing meaning in what your children are doing and you are not you are doing if you are not seeing any meaning and if the children are not, why am i doing this you know what are we headed towards then you need that is the time when you decide that this needs to change so whatever you do see why am i doing it start questioning the meaning and even for children if they feel that an activity whether it is therapy that it is meaningful and it is towards completion of a bigger thing like for example some you know we do give these beading or things like that but if this beading does if the child is not seeing a meaning in it maybe do that same activity including with the household chores so that you know the child feels that okay this is meaningful so can we club our all these therapeutic goals whichever uh, uh you know part of the body or intellect that they are using how can it be made more meaningful to be connected to our daily living skills whichever skill that is whether it is your reading or whatever bring meaning and how to get motivated very difficult you know it's like having a bath you have to get it daily so being motivated is an art and if we slow down and we plan previous day the little things that we want to do and we have to really think what motivates me to be you know and meditation is again one of the things which we have most often overlooked because we we including me i would think okay that's for these things and not for meditation breathing i would always dismiss it but now i, I have realized and i it was in, it was much necessary to do this as a combined activity at home just simple breathing exercises really really calmed and that was wonderful and it is simple it is cost effective nothing your breath you carry with you everywhere you can sit anywhere everywhere and do it together absolutely good Then the next you can see this little boy with a little mask over there mask now that is something for m which has now become part of our lives so it is very very crucial that we start teaching our children on how to wear the mask and if there are sensory issues what side the choice of cloth because if we need to really take them outside they have to wear it so how can we practice wearing that inside how can our children see others using the mask and we even try it out even while they are inside can we see experiment with what is the best thing that works you know especially when there are children who have drooling issues it can be difficult or do again go back to how do we seek help so mask is something which we really probably might not be able to give up in a long time to come then 
in this pandemic, the focus has been a lot on children and of course on families, but sometimes the marriages over the last year, the number of um, clients that came up with marital issues was huge was highly on the rise because I sometimes I feel maybe men and women are just not meant to stay with each other for so long. So, but marriage matters. If you are married, then it matters. If you are living together with your partner, then the relationship matters. Please invest in the marriage because it is a healthy marriage and then comes the children. The children need to see two healthy adults who are parenting them and it has to be a combined effort it is not uh, the wife's sole responsibility parenting or the husband's alone it really matters your private time matters so some time to invest in marriage is extremely crucial otherwise we are we need that connection you know we need that one uh, adult conversation then everything is not about children because if we need to have energy to focus on children, we need our partner, some sane adult where we really need to see, is this relationship going well? Is there something that we need to work around this? If yes, please seek help. Let it not be everything around the, about the children because over this past year, a lot of conflicts has been about the children that has come in the marriage. And sometimes, the two partners forget that they are equally important, that their marriage is equally important for the child. So, uh, but of course, that doesn't mean you have to be married and uh, only then parenting can happen. No, those of who are single parents, if you are divorced, if you're separated, not saying that the idea is not please come and catch up. No, but uh, you know, any, but if there is a relationship, prioritize it has to be important. That is what I would say with the uh, M. Um, and then the I, this is something I'm sure we've heard long enough after all these years, the IEP or the Individualized Education Program. The very reason why I have made this slide very, very broad and not specific to children or disability or ability or uh, COVID is because uh, we really have to make it because we, we have to start thinking individualized at least now because one presentation cannot be specifically about one family. It really has to be individualized. And who is the I in this individualized program? It is the child, of course. But if it is the child, remember that you are also part of it. The entire family is part of this individualized. There is a very unique family there is a unique mother there is a unique father just like there is a unique child so let us not attribute all uniqueness abilities disabilities only to the child please understand that we come as adults with our own share of uniqueness our own share of things that we are unable to do things that we are good at things we really need to help with so the IEP means it has to be unique to that entire family, depending on what is the current situation there. So which is why please seek individualized support to gain specific information about the family. And I is also for initiate, you know, let us not sit and wait for help to come to us. We will have to go. Now you already have a platform here. You are connected with a whole lot of Uh, professionals across. The next thing that you see here is the little, little eyes over here, imitation. Remember, children learn through imitation. So whatever you bring, whatever energy you're bringing to the day, that is what, is my connection unstable? Am I audible? I just got a... Uh, you're audible, madam. You're yeah, audible. okay. Because yes. I just got a call now and I thought my net got cut. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, so children learn through I for imitation, which means whatever energy you bring, that is exactly what they will imbibe. The next is iteration. Iteration means repetition. There will have to be, uh, to make it, to make life more predictable, especially in this unpredictable times, 
certain things may have to be repeated, especially what you can repeat is the D slide, the, the dialogue table, the dining table. If there can be some kind of a predictable routine that your children can see, and it is good for you also, these iterations, they will start imbibing. A lot of calm will come when there are iterations. I is independence. Our biggest goal for our children is whatever skill uh, level that our child is in, can they do whatever that they are doing independently so that you can step off? So if you are only increasing your goals and you are having to be there full time to teach your child and you are not able to be no, then that's not the right goal. A right goal would be when whatever little it might be and you are able to facilitate independence in the child, then you move on, that makes sense. But otherwise, you know, just by increasing goals and packing too much for the day might not be a great idea because I is also for teaching our children interdependence. Remember that it is not only us doing for the child. The child is also doing a lot for us, isn't it? We learn so much, so, so much from our children. So let the children also feel that it's not always us in a hierarchy of teacher and there is a learner. No, it's all together and we are all learning from each other. So sometimes you, you know, create that kind of a healthy interdependence where we ask for help from our children. Again, it would be very, very specific to each family and the skills of um, children in each family, the number of children in each family, the kind of uh, needs each child has. But whatever it might be, let the children feel that they are not the entire people who are dependent. And yes, there is a lot that we gain from them also. Give them that sense of, you know, yes, I am an equal uh, important member in the family. The next I is information overload, which is why I was very, very careful about not packing this uh, PPT with lots of information and techniques and strategies on working with children with disability because there is a lot and lot and lot of things happening online. And I think we really need to slow down and please take only what applies to your family. There are wonderful strategies everywhere and we are not going to be trying out everything. There are a lot of things we can do because the more we know, we will feel, oh my God, I'm not doing that. And we are going to be very feeling very defeated at parents like, you know, oh, they did that. I'm not doing this. Oh my God, there I saw this video of that mother doing this, why am I not doing that? Please, it's okay, it's perfectly fine. We are not in competition with any other family. Our family is unique to us. There can be too much of information that, that comes across even probably this summit itself and all the other webinars that you have probably attended. Wonderful, keep the information, but remember, pick only what applies to your family. The next isolation that, like I said before, this is something which all of us are feeling. So with isolation comes anxiety. So see, even if it is online, how can we connect with other people online, not necessarily to learn a skill or a task and just for the sake of a connection, just to see uh, people and just to say hello. It could be with family members. It needn't be for nothing. It is not uh, with a goal of facilitating any task, but just to feel connected. Just seeing people and seeing the smiling faces can really take away a lot of isolation from us. So see how you can use online for that. And all this will have to come with a lot of eye for insight into your individual family. It cannot be taken from a general class like this. It has to be individualized. And we move to the last slide is the C. No, I am not going to say COVID because I am, I am also like, you know, exhausted with the C word. And it's like, the, no, no, nobody's going to talk to me about COVID again. So, uh, but we all know it's there in our back of our mind. So let us see the most important C here, I would say, is communication. How do we communicate? What do we want to communicate with our children? And what is the process? And there are a few words that um, I have put in here. Uh, though I said information overload, I have stuffed the slide with a lot of information, but it is only to uh, say that uh, 
every day, even if you're doing nothing, you are definitely working with your children. Your children are definitely growing and learning. So communication is happening even if we are not saying anything. You know, even if our children are probably nonverbal, I'm sure they're learning. Their brains are still very much active. Nobody is in coma state away, you know. So learning is always happening. And if you see that there are like these 10 skills that I've written, and I don't, I'm not sure if it's very visible, it says every child is a special and fine creation. Let's all strongly believe so. And each of these letters, because of my obsession with acronyms, each one would expand to a skill area, which is emotional skill, cognitive skill, social skill, fine motor, creative skills, uh, language communication, academic skills. So all this is happening daily. It is not separate, separate, disjoint in the child. This is there with all of us. So if we have to pick one skill as most important, let that be communication. And how do we communicate with our children? The easiest way is through conscious discipline. Did you see that pattern over here? I would go with the three C's that you see there. First is being calm. Only when you are calm and when your children are calm, can you connect with the other person. Only when there is a connection will our children cooperate with us. So first thing is being calm, dealing with our anxieties. And we know that for proper effective learning to happen, we know the hierarchy of learning, right? It starts with your vestibular. The movement is important. The touch is important. The proprioception is important. Only then comes the visual and auditory, which is everything that happens in online is predominantly visual and auditory. So we need to make sure the foundations are taken care of through our communication. Let the children do things as much as possible and only after visual and learn, uh, auditory comes the learning at the peak, okay? So then the last one here I would say is contact. Why I say contact is finally coming back to, since we are in a pandemic, it is important. I hope all of us have written down, written down, not in your technology or your phones, actually written down the important phone numbers that our children can access in case uh, one of us have uh, are infected with COVID. Who should we contact? Do we know in our particular district? Who's the person to contact? What is the procedure? What do we do with our children? Who is our support system? Or have we already contacted them? So if you can make a list of these contacts in whichever area that you're living in, and it has to be a hard copy, which is accessible maybe to our children. Let us reason that this is something which you carry with you everywhere a basic contact number, your, your address and the key significant members in your family who are going to be taking care just in case, God forbid, you know, you need to be hospitalized or anything to do with COVID or if your children fall sick, what do we do? Do we know who to contact in our particular district or state or wherever we are uh, living? That contact is most necessary. But I think that is almost sorted here because I think... Um, uh, Harshali has done an all India coverage now and she will have the entire list with her. So just go to her and she's going to give you all the contacts. And on that note, I think I would have ticked the uh, 45 minutes that I have given. I have two minutes more. So quick recap. I have uh, time for quick recap, uh, Dr. Songil. Two yes, minutes? you have. Yeah. You have so, yes, yeah, yes. in one minute, in 9.45, I do the recap and then I leave it open for uh, questions. So, yes, pandemic can make us go all blank and we might feel, oh my God, where are we heading? Nothing to worry. Parenting is a journey. We are all work in progress. Please prioritize yourself. Do not aim for perfection. Partnership is the key. Practice the pause and we are together in this. A is please, please ask for help. It has, there are millions of alternatives and uh, plenty of aha moments and our children are not going to let us down. Trust them, you know, I'm sure everybody will adapt. And as of now, the whole world is a disabled community. Why? Because it was, we always knew that it was the environment and uh, attitudes that created the barriers and now all of us have it. So we are all ready. The end is, know that when to say no, be assertive with your no, negotiate, focus on the needs, sleep time, the night routines, most important, most crucial, 
um, the D is all the tables, focus on the do's, what can we do? So that gives more direction. Do's give more direction. Don'ts are not leading us anywhere. So focus on the do's. E, emotions are important. Please remember the Eichenhauer's matrix. Delegate, delegate as much as possible. Remember, efficiency is better because do not deplete all your resources by putting all your energies in one particular wonderful session. Marriage is important. You need to find meaning in whatever you're doing. Motivation is like having a bath. You need to need it daily. Meditation is wonderful. Learning to wear your mask. I is you are important. Okay, I, I think I missed out this thermometer slide. Wonderful, but I think of, of you have read it. Basically, it is how we adapt to the uh, conditions around us. Instead of the conditions changing us a little bit, it's fine. How do we adapt and we change the condition and come all better? Remember all the eyes, imitation, iteration, independence, interdependence. Be most aware of information overload. And the last one is communication is the key have all your contacts in place and be conscious about our discipline and i think we are all together in this and we will do absolutely fine and wishing this summit the best and i hope uh, we have started on the good note and we rock it the rest of the four days thank you so much for your patient listening thank you i i'm done the rocket has absolutely launched for us, Seema. That was a, such an optimistic talk. Actually, it is implementing our theme, which goes from challenges to opportunities in a very true sense. So I'm very happy with the way how thoughtful your acronym was actually for all us, all of us. And uh, I'm sure this optimism is not coming from a professional. It is coming from a parent within. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A mother was uh, more being displayed and portrayed over here more than a psychologist or a special educator. So I'm sure that uh, these were the words of a parent uh, just to educate, enrich, empower uh, another parent. So yes, uh, it very much coincides with our vision. I'm sure Together We Can Foundation also has a vision which is coinciding with that of SNCC Rehab Foundation to okay. empower more and more parents and to make them aware and uh, to work on the advocacy for the parents. So a lot of many things were definitely coinciding. A lot of many things were definitely to the point. There were so many formulas for all the parents to remember. I'm sure the one and a half years of COVID has been difficult for all of us, uh, for you, for me, for all the parents, all the participants, for the entire world, it has been difficult. But somewhere we could see that ray of hope from your presentation, from your formulas, that uh, we have so many alternatives now, we need to partner it up with our child. So I would just like to brief out a few very important points as a takeaway for the parents from our talk, madam. So, yes, as I already told that uh, the acronym of pandemic uh, was itself an optimistic thought of converting a big challenge into a very big opportunity. Uh, P meant for partnership, that is partnership with our children a lot, which is the most important thing. Nobody is going to focus or will be able to focus over the perfection in this era or in these times. But if we can partner out really well with our children, that is going to take us very long ahead. A was for alternatives. I, I, was, very, uh, uh, I was very surprised, madam, how many words you could attach to one A and one P and one N and Google, one D. Google, Google, everything. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> No, but I'm sure you brought it so well. You brought the presentation, entire presentation so well. You uh, got it as a cluster of so many thoughts and so many ideas and so many innovations. So, yes, we were on the alternatives. Like, we should opt for alternative alternatives. We should ask for help whenever required. And it is utmost important for all of us to adapt to the situation. Uh, we know that the times are difficult outside, but at least we can adapt and bring uh, a lot of uh, happiness in our own homes. That is what you meant to say from alternatives. Uh, going on to the negotiation, wants versus needs was the highlight over there that our children might want out so many things, but we need to first focus on the needs. What are their exact needs out of their uh, behaviors? You can say out of their wants and out of their askings. So what is the basic need? That is what we need to focus upon. Also, we should be very assertive in saying no. 
that is very important in these times because they might put out few demands which are uh, not realistic to be fulfilled in these times so yes saying a no is also very important the negotiation which we do in our day to day routine becomes very important at this point of time as well and uh, going on to the d's that is the do's and don'ts we always have do's and don'ts and uh, this uh, one and a half year has been full of guidelines full of do's and don'ts for all of us but uh, definitely the do's and don'ts with respect to rephrasing and reframing was a very important pointer over here wherein uh, the life is going to change if we are going to reframe each and every bit of it not put it negatively but see the greener side of the coat that is what was important and that is what uh, even the directions uh, are going to be seen and the dinner table formula which you gave all of us was very refreshing was very uh, uh, very nice very nicely highlighted that at least one meal in the day should be uh, with the entire family uh, going on to the emotional stability part the e the emotional stability is what we need to actually focus upon because uh, that is rightly said that a parent is a very emotional person for the child and that is where those roots are the emotions are those roots to hold on to the parent and child bonding and uh, emotional stability should be our topmost priority i heard you saying you do not do anything else but you focus on the emotions of your child and emotions in your relation and that will work out wonders for you so also the matrix which you gave us about the urgent versus important not urgent versus not important that was wonderful because most of us are so much involved into not urgent and not important work and we take so much stress out of the not urgent and not important so rightly we need to delegate those things which are actually not of our part or which are not actually uh, a cake walk for us and not that uh, sh should not be prioritized so yes uh, the matrix was very important when we are talking about the emotions and we are talking about the work uh, the list of works which we have throughout the day going on to the m which is the meaning it is very important for all the parents to become a lot of meaningful and purposeful uh, and connect that with all the activities which they are doing so adding a meaning is the most important thing is what you told to entire routine or entire schedule of our child along with the meaning also the mask is a very important thing and uh, which has become a part of our clothing routine i would say and uh, it is going to be with us for some time from now on and yes a very important thing is the teamwork between the parents you said you rightly said that you need to invest in your marriage at this point of time and you need to appear as a team you need to have various healthy discussions between the mother and the father so that we can take the child ahead and definitely your entire talk was full of motivation for us so m also goes for motivation over here yes then going on to the i the iep which you shared with us i am sure that it was not the most conventional iep but the iep is definitely going to work out with respect to imitation iteration independence uh, interdependence info overload isolation the most highlighting thing over here was the thermometer and thermostat uh, regulation which you just mentioned that a thermostat is what right now we need to begin and whoever is going to initiate is going to succeed so it is very important for all of us to initiate initiate that change from us first then going on to the parents uh, for so then going on to the children and the last c not to mention c for covid c for connect c for contact which we actually have to not establish these days but the contact can always be virtual the contact can always be uh, something which is the bond between us and our child and what we communicate how we communicate when we communicate what about what are we communicating all these things are very important things to be taken care of so uh, you might have seen in your chat box wonderful presentation seema madam i am sure uh, the presentation was uh, a very enlightening one and uh, i would like to thank you that uh, you have uh, given us a very good opening start to our national parent summit thank you so much madam i would just like to go ahead with a couple of queries uh, which we have with us uh, if you don't mind we have the last 5 minutes to end our session uh, may i ask a couple of questions ma'am yeah sure 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 
Yes. So, ma'am, uh, one of the major things our parents are facing in these COVID times is uh, children always want to go out. Uh, mm-hmm. outside the house they want to go out for might be playing might be in the gardens might be in the parks and stuff like that so uh, how are we going to search for an alternative or might be i can frame it this way that how are we going to adapt to the situation or what can be the resolution over here for all our parents uh, because at few places lockdowns have been imposed once again and uh, getting outside the house is as equally dangerous and as equally uh, not advisable so what would be your take over children wanting and needing to go out of the house yeah yeah thank you for bringing this up this is something i'm facing day in and day out with my own children uh, because here we are in a triple lockdown here in the district that i am and we cannot even step out the playground in the apartment is also closed corridors children can't go nothing so and imagine having uh, two boys and it can be a little difficult so one thing what uh, i did was firstly telling the children that by not going out they are becoming heroes because they are not going to you don't have to create anxiety in them saying oh you go out you get covid then unnecessarily we are bringing anxiety so how to rephrase that would be you can become carriers you know children can become carriers so by not going out you are protecting your parents and your grandparents so you are heroes you are superheroes by staying indoors and you are protecting us so that is so wonderful so be very grateful for them elevate their position that they are heroes by saving all the adult community they have the upper hand so give them the upper hand there like you don't go out and bring it in here so you are saving us that is one way to reframe it give them that responsibility shift the second would be what i did was i had to really sit and rearrange all the furniture in the house to create space you know i in, initially we are very particular about my sofa should be like this and not like this and i have all these wonderful pieces of um, when anyway, nobody is going to come to my house in the near future we're not going to have that so just put it all away create more room whether whether they have their own room or even if it is in your living room or even if it's a dining room make more room so that there is space for children to move that is something which uh, uh, you know they have really have to move then the other one is Uh, about uh, you know uh, games you know earlier definitely you know there were a lot of set of rules where you cannot be jumping on the bed so retaining those rules how do we create spaces so i had to put the mattress down so rearranging your furniture and creating spaces for the children to find opportunities to play within itself and also how to use online effectively if on to connect you know if there are friends by all means let them chat with their friends briefly planned previously that you're going to chat with the friends say hello somebody shows the toy the other friend shows their toy and the connection is maintained so i think it will really depend on mm, that the child the situation but what has to start with starting indoors restructuring reframing uh our you know not creating anxiety that oh out there there is covid there is covid no make them superheroes so these are the few things that uh, i can think of <laughs> wonderful explanation madam about the covid heroes we have in our family itself and uh, the resolution went about with respect to reframing restructuring rephrasing all the things which are available as resources a yeah. uh, quick second question we have in our chat box is uh, how can i explain to immediate family members that mm-hmm. they also have to become a part of all the daily routines in the house with respect mm-hmm. to house help mm-hmm. in reference to a 10 year non verbal boy i won't say in reference to just a 10 year non verbal boy i am sure this is the query for most of the parents uh, who have yeah. attached to us yeah so yeah. how do we explain the family members ma'am to the rest of the family members i think uh, with here uh, if if earlier the household work was entirely done by the house self and now suddenly if it is shifting to and nobody must be used to really doing much at at home because somebody else was doing it start with the minimum basic see you are not taking it on either because i as a mother if i am going to say that whatever my helper was cooking and i am also going to fit in and cook all that not happening so that was the negotiation the end the negotiation i had to reach first with my partner 
uh, saying that this is not something which we can ma maintain. So I have to see uh, the diet plan and say no that this is not going to happen. These are the areas that I need help. Be more specific to what you want each family member to do. You know, be more specific with actionables. If I say I want everybody's support, it is very vague. It is very abstract for children to understand. So for children and even for husbands and if you have other family members, when you are delegating, delegate actionables. So if I'm giving my children, okay, you are going to fill the water bottles at this time and I will take the task of reminding. So be very specific on this whole word called support because support can be very broad and abstract for anybody to uh, comprehend. So if you're specific, today you're making breakfast, today you're going to the shop, you know, make it actionable. Today you are cleaning the toilet or, you know, specifics then it can be divided and do that the previous day itself and not while you're facing the task and please don't take on too much it's perfectly fine to say no i'm not going to be cooking a three course meal no it will be one course it's perfectly fine i'm not going to do that so i think yeah it's up to us to become the bosses and delegate be the manager there Thank you so much for the valuable insights, madam. I would like to thank you for your wonderful talk. And uh, we are done with our timing for the first session. I yes. would uh, like to hand it over to Mr. Bran, who is the moderator for the second session. Thank you so much, Seema, madam, thank for you. attaching. It's